Oh, oh my phone is there. Yes, we is are there? live. Yeah. Is there? Is there? You want to share or you share later? It's already on the page. It's okay. there. So okay. it's fine. It's Hello viewers, good morning and welcome to this special program ahead of the 30th anniversary of the Limbe Wildlife Center that will be commemorated on the 9th of December here in the city of Limbe. This special program today, we want to know more about the Limbe Wildlife Center and other details about the center. But with me this morning, we have the head of education at the Limbe Wildlife Center and the person of Mr. Winson. Good morning, Mr. Winson. Good morning, Joyce. What a pleasure to have you here this morning. We Thank equally you. have the Mr. Henry. He is the Pro Pandrelos project manager. Good morning, Mr. Henry. Hello. Good morning, Jerry. Jerry. Mr. Jerry, good morning. And equally, we have Dr. John, head of the veterinarian. The head, vent head of veterinarian, good morning. Oh, good morning. It's nice having you here this morning. It's a pleasure having you. Thank and you. And we equally have Laura, fundraising and communications manager. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. Nice to be here. Same. Yeah. We are here this morning to talk about the Limbe Wildlife Center. And so many questions are running in your mind. You want to know more about the center. You know what? You want to know why it is called the Limbe Wildlife Center. All these questions will be answered in this special program ahead of the 30th anniversary we're going to take a break we'll be right back Good morning, viewers, and welcome to this special program ahead of the 30th anniversary of the Limbe Wildlife Center that will be commemorated on the 9th of December year in the city of Limbe, the town of Friendship. This morning, we have a special program, and we have the following panelists. Williamson, Head of Education. Good morning. Good morning, Joyce. He's the Head of Education at the Limbe Wildlife Center. We equally have Jerry Pandrelus project manager. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And we have Dr. John, head veterinarian. Good morning, Dr. John. Good morning, everyone. And we equally have a female in the team in the person of Laura, fundraising, fundraising and communications manager. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Joyce. Nice to be here. It's a pleasure for all of us here to be here to talk about the Limbe Wildlife Center. We have so many questions we're going to answer so that you can know more about the said center that is located in the city of Limbe. The center has been existing for 30 years and it, the anniversary is coming up on Saturday, the 9th of December. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Gorilla and chimpanzee, <laughs> and inspiring people to protect nature. 
Please help us celebrate by saying no hunting wild animals, no to bushmeat. Eating bushmeat exposes humans to catching zoonotic diseases such as Ebola and monkeypox. People, avoid bushmeat to keep your family safe. Protect the forest and protect wildlife to protect your community. For, for more information, visit www.limbewildlife.org. <laughs> Say it loud with Limbe Wildlife Center. Stay healthy, healthy protect, protect the, the wildlife. wildlife. Of this program, we begin our program this morning with the head of education at the Limbe Wildlife Center. We have this very first question for you, Mr. Winston. Why is this center called the Limbe Wildlife Center, not the Limbe Zoological Garden? Thank you. It is called the Limbe Zoological Garden by the government of Cameroon. And it was created in 1963, as far back as it is 60 years today. The Limbe Wildlife Center is an NGO that is uh, operating, collaborating, with the Limbe Zoological Garden under the Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife and they are working at the Limbe Zoological Garden. Dr. Jerry, do you have something to add to that? Why is it called the Limbe Wildlife Center and not the Limbe Zoological Garden? Right, so the Limbe Zoological Garden, as, as Wilson says, is the, um, is the government entity, part of MINFOF. Um, and I work for a, a an NGO called Pandrillus, which is um, in partnership with the government of Cameroon. And that partnership between Pandrillus and MINFOF, or the Limbe Zoological Garden, is, creates a project within the Limbe Zoological Garden called the LWC, the Limbe Wildlife Centre. Um, and the difference, we define ourselves, if you like, as the Limbe Wildlife Centre being animal focused. So we're here for the, to rescue seized animals and look after them. Uh, rather than in a, in a traditional zoo, um, having animals on display for the public is the primary motive. So our primary motive is to take in rescued animals, be they chimpanzees, gorillas or crocodiles. Thank you very much, Dr. Jerry, for that. Please, um, uh, let me get back to the head of education at the Limbe Wildlife Center. Just give us a brief. So many are listening and watching us. They don't know how this set center functions. Can you tell us, existing for 30 years, how does the center function? The center was primarily uh, managed by the government of Cameroon since 1963. And until 1993, Pandrus NGO now stepped in and started collaborating with the government of Cameroon at the Limbe Zoological Garden to manage uh, the center. They have been helping to protect, to educate, and care for the animals. We have programs that we go to schools to educate Cameroonians, sensitize them on the importance of protecting Cameroon wildlife. We work seriously when we are in, the, in 14 different schools around Limbe and beyond Limbe. We are right up to Bakingri, which is uh, near Mount Cameroon, where we have elephants. We are here having chimpanzees, gorillas, and many different other primate species that are orphans of the bushmeat trade. We have a nature club that is operating on site where children come from different different schools. If you have your own child at home which need to be educated about wildlife, please send it to us every Saturday. So this program operates every Saturday from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It's a two hours program where children learn a lot about the environment and wildlife. We also put up a lot of billboards, posters, sensitizing the public about the importance of protecting wildlife. We also have an opportunity to guide our visitors that come round to the center. If not all, we give guided tour to our visitors that come to the center so that they can be able to get information and go back and sensitize their families and friends. 
Thank you, Mr. Winston. In the course of explaining, you made mention of Pandrolus, and somebody is wondering what is that. We have the Pandrolus project manager in the person of Jerry. Can you tell us what is Pandrolus all about? So Pandrolus uh, was formed by um, Liza Gadsby and Peter Jenkins um, when they came to Nigeria um, in the in the late 80s. Uh, they then, then crossed over on research missions into southwest Cameroon and saw the urgent need also in this region to, for somewhere to care for the victims of poaching and the illegal pet trade. Um, so after initially setting up in Nigeria, and Pandrillus means um, it's pan, so global um, um, ma mandrill, it's, it's short for drillus, so it's, it's global drills, monkeys. Um, so their focus was very much on the drill monkey, which exists only in this um, cross-border region with Nigeria and Cameroon and on the island of Bioko. So that was their initial focus, and then they started to expand out into other animals that were in desperate need within the, the, cross -Saniga, the whole cross Saniga bioregion. Uh, so the question is, why is, why is Pandrelus only in the zoological garden and not in other areas of the country? Exactly. So that, that, that leads on from what I was saying. So Pandrillus was set up initially to look at drills and then the animals of the cross Saniga region. So that's this side of the Saniga River. So the Limbe Wildlife Center looks at other animals, not just drills. Its first focus was drills, but we have chimpanzees, we have crocodiles, we have um, all sorts of animals. But the, the focus is those animals that come from the bioregion, the cross Saniga. So between the Saniga River and the Nigerian border. All right, stay with you, Mr. Jerry. What is the Limbe Wildlife Program all about? So the Limbe Wildlife Program is our first and foremost concern, and that of the Limbe Wildlife Centre and the guiding ethos of Pandrillus is animal welfare. We're here for the animals, to look after the animals and give these animals, these orphans often that have come from a, a very traumatic experience of being, having their parents killed for bushmeat or for, to be captured for the illegal wildlife trade, we give them a second home. It's a place where we can look after them, they get cared for, and they, they have a second chance at life. That is the, the fi first and primary guiding um, principle of Pandrillus and the Limbe Wildlife Centre project. It's the partnership between Pandrillus and uh, the government of Cameroon. We also have, and Wilson's touched on this, we try and address the causes, the reasons that we end up with these poor orphan gorillas, chimpanzees, drills, being brought to the centre. And that, those reasons are the illegal wildlife trade and poaching. So we have an outreach program, he's mentioned into 14 schools, where we try and give the children a conservation education so they can grow up realising the importance of protecting Cameroon's incredible natural heritage, its incredible wildlife, and protecting these animal species. Um, we also have an alternative livelihoods project called the Green Project, um, which works with the Batoke community, and they, we pay them to provide green brows, which are animals like the gorillas and chimpanzees can eat, and we pay them that money in exchange and it's an alternative livelihood to, to, so they don't need to go and think about hunting around Batoke and within the Cameroon National Park. So we're trying to have programs that address the symptoms, the causes, sorry, the causes of the orphan animals that we end up looking after. Thank you very much, Jerry. This centre has been existing for 30 years and so many have been asking the question, how do they make money? How do they respond? This time we are going to talk with uh, Laura, fundraiser and communication manager at the Limbe Wildlife Centre. Laura, can you tell us how are the funds being raised here at the centre? Thank you very much for your question. Um, so the funding of the Limbe, Limbe Wildlife Centre, it partially comes from the government, so MINFOF, um, also put in funds around the government and then the rest of it coming from the side of Pandrellus who um, I work with. Um, the funding comes from all sorts of different sources. So we work with a lot of international organisations in Europe and the USA and also here in Cameroon and they provide funding for some of the projects that we do. But as well as that for 30 years we've been supported by many individuals all over the world and these individuals send uh, monthly donations to the Wildlife Centre for certain animals and certain projects that they have a special connection with. But these are the primary ways that we bring in funding. But of course as well, people come and visit the Wildlife Centre, they fall in love with the animals here, they give donations when they're visiting as well. So there's many different avenues in which we, we bring in funding, but all of this comes together with the funding from the government in order to maintain the Wildlife Centre throughout the year. 
Laura equally acts as the communication manager at the Limbe Wildlife Center. We want to know how effective is the Department of Communication in the sensitization of the population about conservation and the danger of hunting or eating bushmeat. So as the communication manager, I've been working really closely with our education team to try and sensitize the public about the problem with bushmeat. We're also having a heavy focus on zoonotic diseases, which are diseases that come from animals and they can be transmitted between human and humans and animals. You'll hear a little bit more about this later. But, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so we're doing lots of different communication within Cameroon to try and sensitize the public about the risks of zoonotic disease from bushmeat and also to raise awareness about the wildlife center. So the video that you saw at the start of this interview, this is a video we have been putting on um, TV shows around Cameroon. You can see it advertised on some certain channels. And as well, we have had an audio message that has gone around uh, on ra local radio stations, which is also sensitizing the local public about the Limbe Wildlife Center, the 30th anniversary, and also the risks of zoonotic disease from bushmeat hunting. Thank you very much, uh, Laura, for briefing us on that. Before we want to continue, if you look behind us, you see it has protect forests, protect wildlife, protect zoonoses. And this point in time, we want to talk with Dr. John, head of veterinarian, head veterinarian. Dr. John, what is zoonose disease? Um, thank you very much, uh, very much, Joyce. Um, uh, diseases are classified into many, cla many groups. And so, Zoonosis is just another class. Uh, diseases can jump from humans, from animals to humans. They can also jump from humans to, to animals. But when they jump from animals to humans, we call them, we call them zoonosis. Um, there's also what we call reverse zoonosis, when they jump from, from animals to humans. But there are some other diseases that can jump from from animals to humans and humans to animals. So we call them uh, amphizoonosis. How is this uh, disease, how is it transmitted? There, there are many vectors that can transmit these diseases. And there are, um, and there are also many, um, they, they, can be, they can be viral diseases, they can be bacterial diseases, they can be parasitic. They can be parasitic in nature. Um, it, they, they may. This disease may have uh, another factor in between humans and animals. So they may have an intermediary host that can, can, can are linking, are linking the two, but all the same, they are transmitted from from animals to to humans. So uh, also, they they must be. There must be something in the protection of an animal that has gone wrong or for this disease to jump from the animals to the humans. It could be a cut in the body, it could be a closeness to the animals and where the human is not wearing any protective uh, gear and, and, the, and the, 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 the disease can, can be transmitted by aerosol. It could be... Um, it could it, it could be it, it could be taken in through the mouth so there are various routes in which these uh, infections can be transmitted from animals to humans mr jerry you have something to add yeah i mean i think the the, the key thing we're trying to get across on the, the campaign is that as, as the doctor says that the it, it can be through cuts of a live animal but the the biggest way it's transmitted is through the preparation um or consumption of bushmeat so if you're if you're if you're if you're killing an animal, you're obviously are causing a damage, right, to its protection. You're you're getting its blood on you. You're then preparing the carcass and then eating it. And that is the the really important message to get across to to the population at large. That they're putting by doing that any of those stages of, of, of hunting, preparing, or consuming bushmeat, you're putting yourself at a great risk from these horrible diseases. When you talk of great risks, that means it's really grievous. So I want to know how dangerous is that virus? 
um, it depends on the virus. Take for example Ebola, which uh, we we learned uh, has ravaged many lives um, in West Africa, in in East Africa, Central Africa. We never had a real case in Cameroon. Uh, it can become very dangerous and take away many lives. It can. There, there's also Marburg virus, which has also been uh, identified in in Cameroon. They are hemorrhagic. They are hemorrhagic. Uh, they are called, called hemorrhagic viruses because they they come into your body, they they destroy your blood system, and you can start bleeding blood, and in a very short time, you die. So. Um, and all of them, them come from wild animals. So you, 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 you get the, the bush meat, you prepare the bush meat, you get the cut in your body. Then the vi if that bush meat was having the virus, that virus is transmitted into you. Then the virus now takes over your, your system, your body, and destroys the whole system, and you die. From one person, it can move to another person, it can move to the other person, and it can become a whole regional infection. So what's the way of prevention? Uh, the first thing is um, if people are actually conscious of what wildlife can, bushmeat can transmit, they want to stop eating bushmeat. That's the first thing. Uh, for me, I don't eat bushmeat. Uh, not just because I'm working with wildlife. But I made it a policy. I don't eat bush meat. So this this did not occur. Uh, it occurred because I love the animals. I work with them. I didn't want to then use them for meat. Then the the second aspect of not eating them is because I can I can be infected by any virus that they are having. Because by the, when the people catch bush meat, they don't test the animals. To know if this animal has a virus or not, mm -hmm. or it has a bacteria or not, mm -hmm. or it has a parasite or not. They just get it, then they butcher it, they don't even wear gloves, they just prepare the thing. And some is not, is, uh, not well prepared, not well cooked, not well prepared to kill the viruses or to kill the bacteria or the parasites. And before long, they get into the person who is preparing it, or they get to the, into the person who went to, to push, push, push the animal. Or they get into the driver who brought it from from the forest. Or they get into you know it's a chain of things, a chain of people working working to 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 push uh, to push the animals. It's a chain, a whole chain. And you can find one animal that had a virus has spread to a whole to many people, and before long, many people get sick. So one, I will for me it is zero tolerance for bush meat. But for those who still have to eat it for no reason which I don't know, it must be well prepared. But for me, it's zero tolerance. Dr. Dr. John, please permit me to ask you this last question before we take a break. With hearing bushmeat, 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 and somebody hearing for the very first time, it's like, what is bushmeat? Uh, bushmeat is a meat that is uh, harvested from wild animals like chimpanzees like gorillas like elephants like antelopes like like uh, like monkeys like uh, even rodents like what we call ground beef you no know, giant rats and so on cane rats and so on reptiles snakes crocodiles and so on you know, that's the meat that they harvest from them. It, it's called bush meat. And um, if you move into the towns, you see a thriving business in bush meat. Mm -hmm. And yet there is a law on it. And you go to the towns, you see a big market. It is, they are dead, displayed. And even you, you imagine that even those who go to buy this and eat are those who even write the law, put make a decree against it and they still go and buy it then you begin to imagine why is the law so strong on paper yet it is not implemented why are they still being sold in big markets why are they still being displayed 
don't they move from vehicles and come into town? Why do they allow them to, to, to move on? Mm -hmm. You know, this is, that's a, that's a, it's a terrible thing to think that <laughs> on the law, the decree is so strong on this, mm -hmm. and yet people still display it openly in town and, 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 and eat it. I think Dr. Dr. Jerry, you have something to add? No, I just I think it's really well, really well explained by the doctor there. And I think the law is so important. All these creatures behind us, you can see the gorilla here, um, you can see chimpanzees on here, the drill behind you. These are all highly protected species. So they're class A in Cameroon. Okay, they are completely illegal to be killing them and using for them for bushmeat. That's the first thing. They're also the animals that are most similar to humans. So like chimpanzees, gorillas, they're like about 98% the same DNA. That means that almost all the same diseases can transmit. Primates. Okay, you really, that's the highest risk. Of the protect yourself, protect your family, protect the public, to protect wildlife, protect themselves, live healthy, you and your family. We are together. The message is that we should protect wildlife. In Cameroon, many people come to the Limbe Wildlife Center, Limbe Zoological Garden, and ask us about elephants, chimpanzees, that we should put a lot of them. We are not out here to put varieties of species of animals for people. We have rescued this animal, orphans of the bushmeat trade, by hunters. They have killed their parents illegally. And some have been trafficking uh, to different countries, which is illegal. Please, we need to join hands to protect this animal. We need to join hands to stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned protecting Cameroon's incredible wildlife. And Please help us celebrate by saying no hunting wild animals. No to bushmeat. Eating bushmeat exposes humans to catching zoonotic diseases such as Ebola and monkeypox. People avoid bushmeat to keep your family safe. Protect the forest and protect wildlife to protect your community. For, for more information, visit www.limbewildlife.org. <laughs> Say it loud with Limbe Wildlife Center. Stay healthy, healthy protect, protect the, the wildlife. wildlife. The Limbe Wildlife Center announces to the general public its 30th anniversary on the 9th of December 2023. Celebrating 30 years of protecting Cameroon's incredible wildlife and caring for orphan wild animals such as gorilla and chimpanzee, <laughs> and inspiring people to protect nature. Please help us celebrate by saying no hunting wild animals, no to bushmeat. Eating bushmeat exposes humans to catching zoonotic diseases such as Ebola and monkeypox. People. Welcome back, viewers, uh, to this special program. We're handing at the Limbell Wildlife Center. We'll continue with Dr. John to tell us about the rescue and rehabilitation of animals. Thank you again, uh, Joycey. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a collaboration effort between the government of Cameroon and, and Pandrilus. Um, the, the government of Cameroon has the authority to rescue these animals that are either uh, victims of uh, they are victims of the uh, bushmeat trade or they are victims of the pet trade. So when an animal is identified, the government of Cameroon goes after it and then they rescue that animal. The culprit, um, if we're handled, ends up in prison or pay, en ends up paying a big sum of money to deter him from doing it again the animal gets into the doorsteps of uh, the limbe wildlife center we receive it from there 
and then he comes to the clinic we do an examination of that animal and allowed for a rest for about one week if nothing emergency is required on that animal and then uh, we start from there and then we do general herd checks the animal is in the quarantine that quarantine is the first uh, port of call for that animal he has to stay there for three months within these three months we do three general herd checks we want to observe all the systems we want to test for all the sicknesses all the viruses and the bacteria and the parasites that we have been talking about that can be can can bring an uh, infection to the other animals and to the workers we want to test all of them we want to see if the animal is uh, nutritionally healthy we want to see if it's psychologically stable because some of them come in they are behaving like humans because they have been in the hands of humans for a long time uh, we want to see all these three stabilities nutrition health wise and then psychology if the animal is is a uh, fit after three months we can send it to the, to the section. It has been rehabilitated for further rehabilitation to live to learn to live with other animals and uh, to learn proper animal behaviors and uh, to be able to fit in the animal groups while we prepare them for uh, for release back into nature. Thank you very much, Mr. Jerry. Can you tell us about the conservation part of this project? Yeah, absolutely. So. It carries on from what Dr. John has said. Um, we have the animals in these enclosures, which we've made as big as possible here um, at the Limbe Wildlife Center. The animals go from quarantine, they go into the enclosures. And when they're healthy and they've, they've, they're getting on with other of the same species and behaving well, we look at trying to release them. And that depends on the species at the moment. So we release a lot of small mammals like genets and civets. Uh, we release reptiles like crocodiles. Um, and we have a big, the National Reference Center, the National Reference Program for um, African Grey Parrot releases. So the Limbe Wildlife Center over the years has released th three or four thousand African Grey, grey Parrots in this area. Um, so we have a big aviary down the bottom of the site and then they go to a release site when they're ready, when they've got on, they're talking parrot to each other, they're getting on with each other, they're behaving like parrots and importantly learning to fly because the parrots come into the center often having been in glue traps, horrible things done to them, they've had their wings plucked they can't fly they've got to learn to, to fly again they've got to learn to get on with other parrots again um, so we look after them in the aviary until they're ready and then in batches they go to the release aviary and then they're fed and then after a couple of weeks the doors are opened and they can come and go release themselves basically and when they're comfortable to fly out into the into the forests around Limbe then they then they are released so th this is a really important conservation part of what we do so that is reinforcing, it's great for the animals, because obviously they go back to freedom, but it's reinforcing the natural populations as well. Um, and in the future, we've got very exciting plans. We hope, to, we hope to expand this site and hopefully expand it to another location outside of Limbe, to have a much bigger site where we can start um, breeding some animals and releasing more species back into the wild to re reinforce the natural populations. So maybe some species of primates in the next few years. But this is something that's not really been done in Cameroon. We have, we have a real hope that we are going to be able to achieve that in the next few years. So it's, it's very exciting and it would be amazing for Cameroonian conservation to have that kind of a program running. Wow, thank you very much. Mr. Winson, Head of Education at the Limbe Wildlife Center. At the start of our program, you may mention that the center has been working with some 15, 14 schools. Um, am I right? Yeah. I want to ask how effective is conservation education in these 14 schools? It is growing from strain to strain. As far back as when we started the Limbe Zoological Garden in 1963, there used to be maybe 20 visitors or 100 visitors a year. Today, we are talking of thousands, 40,000, 50,000 visitors passing through the Limbe Wildlife Center, the Limbe Zoological Garden. It is because of the education work that we have extended to other areas and worldwide. We are in 14 schools around Limbe and Fako in general. And in the beginning, when Pandoros started, we had no program as such, but Pandoros brought in this program of uh, conservation education into schools. So we have been going to these schools, extending and having a population of more than 2,000 visitors for these uh, 14 schools. And uh, since then, 
we have reached out more than 50,000 students for a few years that we have been existing, which is great. And uh, if you see the amount of work we are doing, it's not measurable. It depends on people. And sometimes it is seen when people walk in here to donate animal to us, scarcely, which is not frequent like in the past where they used to bring animals for donation more and more often. But now it can take maybe two animals or three animals or no animal for a year, which is due to our education work. People are able to recognize the fact that we need to protect wildlife for us to continue having it. Other countries benefit in terms of wildlife. We cannot talk of touristic product in our country when we don't have the touristic uh, product. So wildlife is paramount important for us to protect so that our visitors can keep coming to see Cameroon. The Limbe Wildlife Center is a center for education. Students come from all of our universities to study wildlife here in our center in Institute Conservation. Please, there is need for us to protect our wildlife. Education work is expanding. Thank you. All right, that's set and on. Let's now focus on the 30th anniversary. We talk with the communication manager, Madam Laura. Tell us how prepared you are ahead of the 30th anniversary coming up on Saturday, the 9th of December. So, of course, we're extremely excited to have our 30th anniversary this weekend, which we'll be celebrating with an event at the Wildlife Center. So we're looking forward to welcoming some VIPs to really show them exactly the work we're doing. Personally, I've only been here one year and a half, but I can see how dedicated the staff are here, how dedicated everyone is to the Limbe Wildlife Center and the animals live here. The people that work here really, really love the animals and they really, really want everyone to protect wildlife. It's just exactly what they want. And this 30th anniversary is going to do exactly that, celebrate the achievements of the Wildlife Center. That includes the staff here as well and everything that they have done to get to the point we are today because there's absolutely no way the Wildlife Center would be how incredible the infrastructure, the education team, the veterinary department, none of it would be possible without the hard work of the staff that have been here. Some of them have been here since the very first day. So for 30 years they have been here. So to have this celebration, not only to celebrate the achievement of the Wildlife Center, but also the people that work here is very exciting. And preparations are underway. Preparations are on the way. And remember, the celebration is on Saturday, the 9th of December. And now let's talk with Dr. John. How prepared are you ahead of the 30th anniversary? Um, prepared. As Laura has already said, we are all prepared. Everybody is prepared together. We... Uh, I wouldn't say that I've prepared some sick animals to display on a <laughs> on a on a third anniversary, <laughs> but I want to say that I'm happy that there are no sick animals now that will prevent me from enjoying the third anniversary. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pandrelo's project manager Jerry. The 30th anniversary is coming up on Saturday, the 9th of December. With the assignment I see on your face, it tells us something big is really going to happen on Saturday. Let's hear from you. Thank you very much, Joycey. Um, yes, I think it will be something very big and very, very memorable for the centre, and it should be. Uh, as Laura has said and Dr. John has said, 30 years is an incredible achievement. It's a, it's a lot of project managers. I'm the 14th one to hold this role over those that time so it's um it's an incredible achievement to to all the staff and all our local collaborators around limbe as well um we couldn't have done this without a lot of a lot of support from our government partners from minfov and people around limbe the authorities that have helped us it's too many to mention um but also as laura talked about earlier on a lot of in big international um donors and supporters so i think i'd like to say to to everybody watching this, whether they're here in Cameroon or abroad internationally, please come together, think of Limbe Wildlife Center or come to Limbe Wildlife Center on Saturday the 9th of December. Go online at www.limbewildlife.org. Um, you can support us there, you can sponsor some of the animals. Um, 
yeah, be a part. You can be a part of these, these, these incredible celebrations of 30 years. You say thank you to the staff and a big thank you to the animals. And the best way to do that is maybe adopt one or sponsor one online. So that would be fantastic. Um, Indeed, it's really going to be fantastic on Saturday, the 9th of December. I'm wondering and asking myself, are we expecting the, the 50,000 students and people that you have trained to be here on Saturday, the 9th of December? Great. We are expecting a lot of groups to come to animate, and that's the part of education work that is ongoing. Saturday is come and see. It is come and see. We, we don't know the number yet, but however, we have invited the administration and a lot of other people to come and share with us, but we do not prevent anybody from coming. They have been coming, and Saturday is a special day of celebration, and we are excited to showcase our 30 years of achievement to the public. Thank you very much. And together with the public, we can achieve. All right, Laura, together with the public, we can achieve. We know that um, before you get into the zoo, you have to pay a token. So are we going to pay a token that Saturday to get into the zoo? I think that's that's a decision for the government. So um, it's not something Pandra, uh, we as Pandras dictate, and I, I think that's um, it'll probably be the token as normal, um, as far as I'm aware. But th that's for the the government partners to decide. Okay. Laura, the communication manager, we're still talking about the 30th anniversary, and you have something to say. Yeah, so of course the 30th anniversary um, celebrations will exist here in Limbe and we also invite people to come and visit throughout the month of December to really come and see how beautiful the Wildlife Centre is looking. But also for our international supporters, the people that have helped the Wildlife Centre to get to where it is today, we also encourage you to get involved with our 30th anniversary campaign online. So we have a hashtag 30 for 30 campaign. We would like to raise an additional $30,000. This is for the Limbe Wildlife Center. And what that will do is ensure, well, help us to continue for another 30 years and beyond, because this is not going to be the first 30th anniversary. Maybe we'll have our 40th, 50th, 60th. And we want to see the Wildlife Center continue and to have the support of people internationally to enable us to reach that goal will be absolutely excellent. Thank you. The invitation is open to the general public. I want to invite principals, head teachers of different primary schools, secondary schools to take this December, bring the children here, let them stroll around the zoo and get a taste of what is happening right here. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. to protect nature please help us celebrate by saying no hunting wild animals no to bushmeat eating bushmeat exposes human to catching zoonotic diseases such as ebola and monkey pulse. people avoid bushmeat to keep your family safe protect the forest and protect wildlife to protect your community for, for more information visit www.limbewildlife.org <laughs> Say it loud with Limbe Wildlife Center. Stay healthy, protect the wildlife. The Limbe Wildlife Center announces to the general public its 30th anniversary on the 9th of December 2023, celebrating 30 years of protecting Cameroon's incredible wildlife and caring for orphan wild animals such as gorilla and chimpanzee. <laughs> and inspiring people to protect nature. Please help us celebrate by saying no hunting wild animals, no to bushmeat. Eating bushmeat exposes humans to catching zoonotic diseases such as Ebola and monkeypox. People avoid bushmeat to keep your family safe. Protect the forest and protect wildlife to protect your community. For, for more information, visit www.limbewildlife.org. <laughs> Say it loud with Limbe Wildlife Center. Stay healthy, healthy protect, protect the, the wildlife. wildlife. 
The Limbo Wildlife Center announces to the general public its 30th anniversary on the 9th of December 2023. Celebrating 30 years of protecting Cameroon's incredible wildlife and caring for orphan wild animals such as gorilla and chimpanzee, <laughs> and inspiring people to protect nature. Welcome back, dear viewers. This we have just barely five more minutes to wrap up. We're going to start with Mr. Winson, head of education at the Limbe Wildlife Center. Your last word before we leave our viewers. Thank you. I am just went, going to make it clear that the public should know that the Limbe Zoological Garden is a government institution and was established in 1963. And uh, a lot of people think. It is a zoo for entertainment. We are not a center for entertainment. And that is where Pandulus NGO came in to use the name the Limbe Wildlife Center. The government knows it like the Limbe Zoological Garden. But in course of doing this, we are struggling to change the name to suit our context because we are not here to keep varieties of animals to be called a zoo. But in the official gazette of the government is the Limbe Zoological Garden. But we are using the name the Limbe Wildlife Center by the NGO. So it should be clear that we are using the name Limbe Wildlife Center. And that is mostly used by the NGO. But in government official context is the Limbe Zoological Garden. Many people don't like to support zoos because they think they don't have space. So we are using the name the Limbe Wildlife Center for people to have this impression but the Limbe Wildlife Center started in 1993 why the Limbe Zoological Garden started in 1963 the Limbe Zoological Garden is 60 years old today why the Limbe Wildlife Center is 30 years old today and we are celebrating the Limbe Wildlife Center not the Limbe Zoological Garden Laura, communication manager, your last word before we leave our viewers. Uh, I'd like to say thank you uh, to you, Joyce, for, for helping us today and also thank you to everyone watching. Uh, in advance, I'd like to say thank you for everyone that comes and enjoys our celebration with us this Saturday and also for all the staff for the very, very hard work to enable the Wildlife Centre to get to where it is today and also to all our international supporters, whether you're an individual or an organisation, if you supported us 30 years ago or 30 minutes ago, thank you very, very much. Dr. John. Uh, I, I would like to wrap up by emphasizing on the aspect of zoonosis. It's an important thing which everybody needs to know. Um, if, we, if we meddle with the lives of wildlife, we're well, obviously going to get sick. They must be, wildlife must be kept wild and humans will not get sick. Diseases will jump from animals. That's a take home message. Thank you very much. And let's talk with uh, Mr. who started this and made this all possible 30 years ago. They, they deserve a massive thank you and have built it up over these last 30 years with the help of numerous project managers, numerous staff, numerous volunteers. All of those people um, I'd like to say a big thank you to. And that has created the, the Limbe Wildlife Centre that you see today. It is a, a flagship, uh, a beacon, I think, of, of the, the best practice in Cameroon. Um, and please, as Laura said, come along on Saturday Watch it live, It'll be, there'll be coverage on radio, there'll be coverage on television, there'll be coverage online on Saturday, or just go online and support our 30 for 30 years. Any support you can give, and the Limbe Wildlife Centre will go from strength to strength for the next 30 years, okay? We have such exciting plans. It would be amazing for these animals here, um, and all our supporters to be able to eventually, get, in the next few years, create a much bigger site, 
have a second site where the animals can have much more space, much better welfare, live in much more natural conditions, and that will lead, hopefully, to many more animal releases in, back into the wild. It is such an exciting plan, exciting vision, that I uh, Im uh, implore everybody to come, that possibly can to come and help and support us or do it remotely from other countries. So thank you very much. Dear viewers all over the world, thank you very much for staying tuned to this special program where we're talking about the Limbe Wildlife Center and the celebration, the anniversary, the 30th anniversary coming up on Saturday, the 9th of December. Remember, you're invited to be here. What's the time, Laura? Oh. The time for the celebration. Uh, we will be open as normal from 9 o'clock. You can come also any time in December as well. You will be welcome to come and have a tour around the Wildlife Centre and learn all about the 30 years of achievements. All right. The time on Saturday is 9 a.m. And any time you want to pass by, pass and gain knowledge. Remember this. Protect forests. Protect wildlife. Pre prevent zoonoses. Thank you all very much. Stay tuned. Stay glue. Shalom. of protecting Cameroon's incredible wildlife and caring for orphan wild animals such as gorilla and chimpanzee <laughs> and inspiring people to protect nature. Please help us celebrate.